All right, kids, someone once told me, if you can see a mountain lion, that means it isn't hunting you. Every day since, I have lived in terror. And if I can scare y'all a little bit, a mountain lion can choose to maul you even if you can see it, or if it's not hunting you. Plus, humans pose a danger to mountain lions too. You know that wasn't the first tweet that taught me something about, well, not only the behavior of big cats, but the behavior of people. There was this banger from 2015. I never thought leopards would eat my face, sobs woman who voted for the leopards eating people's faces party. With cougars, pumas, and mountain lions pretty much being different names for the same animal, while panthers, jaguars, and leopards aren't very different from one another, and since the 2016 presidential election, I've realized that no matter if these species are on the prowl, some humans will just make themselves bait. Rob Smith, a gay and black conservative man, was allegedly heckled and called racist and homophobic slurs while attending a MAGA event this past December. He said, quote, last night in Phoenix, I was confronted and surrounded by some white supremacists that don't like gays or blacks in the Republican Party. They shouted the N word and F word at me to make their point. However, I served in Iraq. I never backed down ever. Which means military personnel doesn't matter to those white supremacists either. Now, Rob was invited to talk about his experience on CNN, and he pointed out that conservative media didn't call at all, despite the fact that he was a political analyst on Fox News. However, there's someone claiming to have recorded what happened and replied to this post from Rob Smith saying, I filmed this. One, no one yelled the former. Two, you are, however, the latter. You may be asking why Rob Smith would put himself in the lion's den in the first place. Not sure if that helps my analogy. And whether a Rob Smith or others like him recognize predators and realize that they can be prey. Today we're going to talk about black conservative men in politics at the national level. In particular, U.S. Senator Tim Scott and Representative Byron Donalds. I would focus on more, but there aren't more. While trying to answer the question, is there a black Republican candidate who could be honest about his or her experiences as a black person while campaigning for the country's highest office? Or is dishonesty about race in America the price of admission? Because as you're about to see, seems like some people just want to be swallowed up. Did you ever think that she actually appointed you, Tim? <laughs> and think of it appointed and you're the senator of his state and she endorsed me you must really hate her <laughs> no it's uh, it's a shame it's a shame uh-oh i just love you no that's <laughs> that's why he's a great politician that's why he's a great politician that's tim scott the only black republican in the united states senate one of 11 black people in the history of the US to be in the Senate, and the internet's first choice in the fan casting of Mushmouth. I'm not saying that, social media is. I just happen to agree. Tim Scott was elected in South Carolina, the state that was the first to secede from the Union and once had more enslaved people than citizens. Because of the history of the Palmetto State, Scott will admit that America was racist. I mean, his ancestor was enslaved and his grandfather was denied the right to vote for half of his life. Tim Scott himself advocated for Confederate flags to be taken down off of government buildings there. He refused to join the Congressional Black Caucus towards the beginning of his career because, quote, my campaign was never about race. Scott maintains that this country isn't currently racist, despite the fact that, according to a speech he gave on the floor of the Senate in 2016, in the midst of high profile police killings, he told the story of how in one year of his life as an elected official, police had pulled him over seven times. Once he was accused of driving a stolen car, he was also harassed by Capitol Police. Then he shared accounts of similar things happening to his brother and one of his staffers. But hey, sometimes Tim Scott felt more racism from his black friends who called him Oreo and only in America can his story play out the way it has. That story being raised by a single mother, poverty, paying for braces out of his own pocket in order to fix his buck teeth. So that means Tim Scott could play Mushmouth and Bucky Miller. Going from that to Senate 
and from receiving racist letters on his locker in grade school to receiving racist voicemails in his office and then even running for president. Tim Scott kicked off his presidential campaign by saying, for those of you on the left, you can call me a prop, you can call me a token, you can call me the N-word, you can question my blackness, you can even call me Uncle Tom. Although, quick recap, he has been subject to racism from black people who called him Oreo and now Democrats, but America is not racist. Anyways, Scott will go on to say, just understand, your words are no match for my evidence. Your pessimism is no match for my history. My existence shows your irrelevance. The truth of my life disproves your lies. By lies, Tim Scott means liberals trying to convince black people that America is preventing us from advancement and opportunities. Look, please don't take what I'm about to say as me defending Democrat messaging. As far as I'm concerned, they sound like mushmouth. However, Black liberals in Congress, many of which share Tim Scott's title and are just as successful as he is, are trying to convince black Americans that we can't make it over on their side of the aisle where there's more black representation and a better chance to win votes. Congress is statistically more white than America is. And even though for the first time since the 1870s, there will be four, count them, for black GOP representatives, the vast majority of the diversity in Congress is in the Democratic Party. And black Republicans are far less likely to be elected into office. Which reminds me, oh my gosh, when fellow South Carolina politician, Senator Lindsey Graham, was campaigning with and for Herschel Walker to become a US Senator out of Georgia, he said to Sean Hannity on Fox News, Democrats are scared to death of Herschel Walker because if Herschel Walker becomes a Republican, maybe every other young child in America of color might want to be a Republican. He changes the entire narrative of the left. We're a party of racists, Sean. Me and you are racist. The Republican Party is racist. Graham would go on to say, well, what happens when the Republican Party elects and nominates Herschel Walker, an African-American black Heisman Trophy winner, right? Olympian. It destroys the whole narrative. Well, Herschel Walker wasn't elected. What does that say about the Republican Party? The narrative is still alive and well, especially because the likes of these two, one's a white nationalist, the other was in the KKK, regularly get enough votes from the Republican voting bloc. So. What, what's your message for voters of color who are concerned that without the John L. Lewis Voting Rights Act, they're not gonna be able to vote in the midterm? Well, the concern is misplaced because if you look at the statistics, African-American voters are voting in just as high a percentage as Americans. White American conservatism needs a black or brown face to tote their talking points. See, former governor of South Carolina, Nimrata Haley. She, like Tim Scott, regularly denies the existence of racism, systemic or otherwise, when their family histories specifically prove otherwise. So it puts Tim Scott in a weird position when his party mates and fellow presidential hopefuls, Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, say that slavery wasn't the cause of the Civil War and slavery taught the enslaved necessary skills respectively. Watch this man squirm when he's asked about those statements, knowing that he has to either cross the party line or betray what he knows to be true. That he was, quote, pulled over so many times here in DC for absolutely no reason other than driving a nice car. As a black man, I might add. Furthermore, it's like a different form of discrimination or bias. You can't say I'm black because that would be terrible. So find something else that you can attack. Tim Scott said that in response to the probability that donors would not fund his presidential campaign until he pretty much proved that he was in a romantic relationship with a woman. The GOP wondered if this 57-year-old black man was single or a queer. Those were the options, which further lets me know that it's hard enough to be a black Republican and nearly impossible to be a black and gay Republican, Rob Smith. So looking at the results of the Ohio primary to determine the Republican presidential candidate from earlier this week, you see that Tim Scott was beaten so bad by the likes of Haley, DeSantis, and Vivek Ramaswamy, who also denies the existence of systemic racism. Note the fact that Tim Scott didn't even make it this far. And when Scott conceded defeat, ending his 2024 presidential run, he said, I think the voters, who are the most remarkable people on the planet, have been really clear that they're telling me, not now. Nah, 
Not never. But why is that? Republicans, what's wrong with Tim Scott? What's the problem? Is he too boring? Is it his policies? What is it? Is he not conservative enough? Does he need to do a better job of denying racism's role in America? Or is it because of his skin color? It's hard enough to not vote for Biden out here without being told you ain't black. I can only imagine with these minority Republicans, not even enough to make a junkyard gang, will have to talk about or tolerate in order to become Trump's vice president. If I'm not mistaken, Trump claimed, I think that's why the black people are so much on my side now, referring to his felonies and criminal indictments, because they see what's happening to me happens to them. He said this in South Carolina, I think in front of Tim Scott. But hey, the grand old party isn't going to just give a minority an unearned position due to their political ideology, right? Right? Yesterday, my first vote for Speaker of the House was for Byron Donalds. Today, I'm rising to nominate Byron Donalds for Speaker of the House of Representatives. Byron Donalds. Byron Donalds? Byron Donalds, U.S. House Rep out of Southwest Florida, was nominated to become House Speaker after merely being in his position for barely more than one term. He got in office in 2020, so I'm going to keep this portion of the program brief. Byron Donalds does not believe systemic racism exists either. It's crazy how black success to a conservative proves that obstacles weren't there as opposed to confirming that there are hurdles in the game of life. Hmm. Donalds is the type of dude who would remind people that he's 6'2", 275, when he could possibly face retribution from former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Is that how big Fat Albert is? Never mind, that's not okay. But then will claim to be attacked when someone on the left tells him about himself. As for his nomination to become Speaker, when others called into question his credentials, experience, and pedigree, he said, if you see a black man rising, I mean, let the man rise even if you don't agree with him. Hey, we see you, homie. But no, for real, we can see you. Byron has a criminal history. The New Yorker detailed it like this. If he hadn't entered conservative politics, Donalds might still be the kind of black man who's past indiscretions. He was arrested on a marijuana charge in the 1990s and later pleaded guilty to felony bribery, get regularly cited by Republicans to justify perpetual punishment and brutal law enforcement. None of that stopped Donalds from going on Newsmax and saying Biden's SCOTUS nominee should depend on qualifications. Okay, but if he's only picking Katanji Brown Jackson simply because they're going to reinforce a radical liberal agenda, that's bad for black Americans, it's bad for white Americans, it's bad for Hispanic Americans, it's bad for everybody. Donalds added that, I noticed that Joe Biden did not nominate a black conservative woman, he's only been nominating black liberal women. Again just playing to his base because he has no other leg to stand on. That's not what's in the best interest of the country. President Ronald Reagan put Sandra Day O'Connor on the bench because he wanted a woman there. Justices are nominated to the bench all the time due to their gender, ethnicities, religions, political ideology, and now their races. Well, to be clear, Supreme Court justices, presidents, and members of Congress were always chosen due to their race. I guess it doesn't count when you're white, but we're supposed to believe that all these lilies were chosen due to their political acumen or whatever. What Byron Donalds has that Tim Scott doesn't is a wife. They'll forgive the fact that she's white and he'll hold a gun and a picture or three along with being loyal to Trump. Byron Donalds could be considered a MAGA firebrand. I don't know. MAGA is make America great again. By the way, they love African-American people. They love black people. MAGA loves black people. Black people aren't MAGA. Vivek isn't either. Rob Smith? Definitely not. It was reported while I was writing this episode that Smith left the Republican Party. That doesn't mean he's suddenly a Democrat, though. And none of this means that Dems and liberals don't eat their own, can barely criticize Biden over here on the left. And while I'm at it, perhaps Tim Scott and Byron Donalds weren't devoured by their party. Nibbled on though, yeah. 
It just occurred to me that I haven't explained what the I never thought the lepers would eat my face thing means. It refers to a parody of regretful voters who vote for cruel and unjust policies and politicians and are then surprised when their own lives become worse as a result. It has been commonly used to parody regretful Brexit and Trump voters. Don't forget about party. According to the Daily Beast, in January, the Messenger reported that the Republican National Convention had already shuttered most of the nearly two dozen Hispanic community centers that served as the base for the minority outreach program, leaving just five open. The program at issue is an initiative from the 2022 midterms where RNC field staff engaged voters through gatherings and events held at community centers in areas with heavy minority populations, most specifically, Latino communities. While recording this, it was reported that Candace Owens and The Daily Wire have parted ways. She may be venturing into independent media, may somehow end up on the left. We'll see how that goes. But this song is dedicated to her.